Okay, so here we have a video to differentiate um, the two types of jaw relation in record, i.e. centric occlusion, centric relation. Centric occlusion relates to teeth, centric relation relates to the maxillary to the mandible. Two entirely different relationships. So I'll take you through three stages, three different cases here to show you how they differ. So the case here, the patient's got what is known as tripod contact. They've got anterior teeth and posterior teeth in both arches, which means if the patient was to close together, you can put the teeth together and you can see the teeth intercuspate. That is a reproducible jaw relationship. You only need a fixed point, point somewhere where the teeth intercuspate that's reproducible that you can record centric occlusion for a patient like this. So this patient you would restore in centric occlusion. Situation like this, you would simply record a bite registration of some description between the upper and lower arches. That's simple, straightforward. The vertical relationship is fixed. The patient can't overclose. And the patient can intercuspate. You can see these premolars intercuspate, as do the molars. Straightforward case. So centric occlusion, no problem. Vertical face site governed by the fact the patient cannot overclose. Situation one. Situation two. Patient with missing teeth in buccal segments. Now, which jaw relation does this most suit when you're going to restore the patient. Now, if the patient can close together and they've got a positive vertical stop that is still intercuspal. So they've still produced an intercuspal position. So again, centric occlusion is perfectly fine for this patient. The problem you've got now is you cannot hand, hand articulate the cast because there's no posterior support. The models can be anywhere. So in a situation like this, you need occlusal registration rims to record the bite. So in this situation, you would have an upper occlusal rim made. And when the patient bites together now, you still haven't got a posterior stop on the right-hand side. The left-hand side, the rim touches the teeth, absolutely fine. The left-hand side, this is still variable. So you need two occlusal rims and a bite registration material between the two. So we have a lower occlusal rim as well. So now, when the patient occludes, intercuspal, so centric occlusion, no problem. These two are still intercuspate, but now you've got posterior support, so you cannot get this wrong. So if you can't hand articulate the cast without any movement, you need occlusal rims. You cannot use a bite registration material just squirted on the ridges or around the anterior teeth. It's totally inadequate. Ask any technician. So we have intercuspal position here, so centric occlusion is perfectly okay, as is centric relation, because this is reproducible. You can see this, the patient can feel this. This is a reproducible jaw relationship. So now, the worst case scenario, the complicated one. We now have a patient which has got a number of edentulous saddles, and this is the important bit. When the patient now attempts to occlude, there's no vertical stop, so the patient can overclose, and there's no horizontal relationship. There's no reproducibility whatsoever if you're looking at a tooth position here. So in this situation, you have to record. The vertical dimension has to be established, and to do that, you're gonna need a Willis bite gauge or something similar, you have to measure the resting face height, subtract three or four millimeters to establish the occluding face height. That's a separate video for a separate time. But if you've got unopposed teeth, this patient can overclose and you also don't know what the horizontal relationship mandible to mag maxilla. So a situation like this, you need two occlusal rims again, because you've got free ancillaries, you cannot use a bite registration material in isolation. So to record the occlusion here, again, problem you've got here, the patient will contact on the anterior part of the rim, which you would have to trim to get the correct lip support, the correct lip line. And you need to get this patient into centric relation. Now again, that's a separate video for a separate time, but this situation you've got overclosure potential, so you need centric relation and you need to work out the vertical dimension. So in this patient's case, the patients, none of the teeth meet, they all miss each other. So in a situation like this, you have to establish the resting vertical dimension, subtract three or four millimeters for the occluding vertical dimension. The occlusal rims have to touch on both sides and you have to trust the patient to, or teach the patient to go into centric relation. And when you've established the correct vertical dimension and the patient's practiced at going into centric relation, you then Use a bite registration material between the rims. You do not squirt blue mousse or something similar, um, hydrobite on the bite surfaces of the rims because you will get bounce. Ask any technician. 
So a situation like this, the worst, the hardest one to record, you need to record the vertical dimension, resting vertical dimension, subtract three or four millimeters, precluding vertical dimension, you restore the rims to that height, then you get the patient into centric relation. And here we go. So three different registrations. This is the most difficult one because it involves the use of a Willis gauge or something else. Go back to the beginning. This patient we did at the beginning. This patient has a vertical stop. You do not need a Willis gauge to work out the vertical dimension of this patient. If you restore them to that face height, which you would be, unless you put lots of tooth wear, you do not need a Willis gauge. And the second situation, again, we have a vertical stop. These teeth meet, the patient cannot overclose. You do not need a Willis gauge for that either. And the last situation, just to recap, this patient can easily overclose. There's no vertical stop, so you need a Willis gauge or some way of establishing the occluding vertical dimension. I hope that's helpful.